want to welcome you to another blessed presentation of God's Holy Word with Pastor Omar Tebow. It's recorded live at Philadelphia Christian Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. As always, each audio message is designed to bring you into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into a message that's already in session. If you're just cutting up, hallelujah, uh, uh, fussing and carrying on in the parking lot or, or getting dressed or fussing at your husband, that's not the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is on the throne in your heart, he's going to produce some things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, self-control, faithfulness. You see? And every time you're operating outside of that Christian, he not on the throne no more. As you go throughout your day. You need to check yourself. Who's on the throne? <laughs> Who's on the throne? When you're playing basketball, hallelujah, and, you, and, you check, and you, you're about to get rowdy up there, you, you ask yourself, who's on the throne? When you're at school, young person, and they're picking on you, you want to give them a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> you ask yourself, who's on the throne? You see? Prayer brings down the Holy Ghost. But look at it here. Come on, listen, we got to move, y'all. He says, and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove. And what? And a voice from heaven. Prayer not only opens the heavens, prayer not only pours down the Holy Ghost, but prayer allows you to hear God. How many people want to hear God better in here? And some of you in here, hallelujah, you saying, listen. I hear people saying that they heard God talk. And some of you in here, you're saying, I've never heard him before. You know? And I want to teach you how to hear his voice. You're going to hear his voice through prayer. When you get out in that prayer closet and you begin to talk to him, he's going to talk back to you. And it's not somehow that's going to be loud and everybody's going to hear, but he's going to speak to your heart in a still, small voice. He's going to tell you to do things that you hadn't thought about. He's going to give you ideas that wasn't even in your brain, wasn't even in your mind. And when you get up off the ground and you have that in your mind and you go do it and it work out, you say, huh, I done heard the voice of Almighty God. <laughs> to hear him. And prayer does that. God, I want to hear you, God. Because ain't nothing like hearing God, no, Miss Gray. Yeah. Ain't nothing like hearing God. Yeah. And let me tell you. He speaks, yo. You know, he speaks. They got a lot of people saying they heard him and they never heard him. I'm not, you know, some people abuse that. And because of that, some folks say he not talking no more. No, 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 my friend. He's talking. But not too many people listening. I've often said, hallelujah, and I just want to, I just want to pastor you this morning. I just want to talk with you about your walk this morning, if that's all right. When you go down to pray, do you give a chance for God to talk back to you? Do you have a portion in your prayer where you say, okay, God, I've said everything that I need. Now speak, Lord, thy servant listening. And you just stay still. And you just be quiet. You just say la. You see? When we pray the heavens open, when we pray, we hear the voice of Almighty God. And you make sure it's God because you, you can hear plenty of voices. You make sure it's God because God's never going to tell you to do something outside of Scripture. Amen. You see? But look what else. And the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven. And it said, Thou art my beloved son. In thee I am well. What? I'm well pleased. What does that say to us, Pastor? God is pleased when we pray. When Saul was converted on the Damascus road, Jesus appeared to Ananias. And one of the things he said about Paul was, Behold, he prayed. With a surprise, with a with a with a, a a love, with good pleasure in his voice. Whenever you fall down to pray, it pleases Almighty God. 
Out of all the things that God should say his house should be called. Yeah. Out of all the things. Yeah. And I feel that so many different things that we can do at church. He can call it a house of praise. He can call it a house of worship. He can call it a house of the Bible, a house of truth. Out of all the things, Brother Doug, he says, and my house shall be called a house of prayer. That's where prayer is in the heart of God. You see? That's where prayer is in the heart of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Saints of God, let's go back to Luke 22. Come on with me. Now, out of all the blessings that we derive out of prayer, Jesus shows us another one. In Luke 22, hallelujah, verse 40, he tells us, pray that ye enter not into what? Into temptation. All the aforementioned blessings that I just named, and there are plenty others, y'all, about prayer. Jesus says there's one more that you need to tell him. He says, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And a different gospel say, pray lest you enter into temptation. You need to know prayer affects the way we tempted on this side of heaven. Prayer affects it. Oh, yeah. And you need to know that prayer will keep you out of temptation and prayer will get you through temptation. You need to know that. You need to know that. This prayer is on another level, this, this, this weapon that God has given us. It's on another level. You know? Now, first of all, that word temptation is a is a is a two prong word. It could mean two things. Temptation here in the Greek can mean number one, our trials, our affliction, the adversity that we go through in life, the times of weeping, of wailing, the times of loss, losing loved ones, losing spouses, losing children, losing mama and daddy. You see, losing property, losing jobs, being abused. Amen. Being molested. Amen. Being raped, amen? People hurting us and hurting the people we love. You see? That's one word for temptation. It's the trials and the struggles of life that we go through. And the thing about that is, is that we all going to go through them. Amen. James says, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Not if, but when. We're all going to go through some things, y'all. And I'm not saying what I go through is just like yours. No, it's a myriad of different things we have to go through. And I'm not saying yours is going to be as tough as mine or mine is as tough as yours. Yeah. But Jesus says in this world, my friend, you will have trouble. You see? But you need to know our weapon in these times of trouble. You need to know what to do in these times of trouble. You see? And Jesus says, pray. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Now, y'all, look, let me give you a little word on this. Prayer will keep trouble out your life. Did you catch that? If you want a life with not too much trouble, now you're going to get some. It's not going to absolve all of it. You see, because Jesus went through trouble and we know he was a prayer warrior. But some of us going through trouble, we don't even need to go through. You see what I'm saying here? God has a, has, a, has a jar of trouble in heaven. You see? And he has a little line on the, draw, on, on the jar. Uh, the line separates, hallelujah, this is the trouble that the prayer warrior is going to get. This is the trouble of, of those that don't pray. And listen, I don't know about you, but I just want the trouble that I have to have. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I don't want all the trouble. Just give me what I have to have. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes we can't learn stuff without trouble. So just give me what I have. Don't give me nothing extra. No line y'all. I don't want no cheese on that. I don't want no jalapenos with that. I just want what I have to have, the basics. So Jesus says prayer will give you just the default package of trouble. You see? He says, pray, lest you enter into temptation, pray. And listen, the days that I pray, the days that I pray, there's less confusion in those days. It seems like people drive better on the road around me, Brother Phil, when I pray. 
And when they drive back, I say, ooh, man, I just spun or just, you know what I'm saying? I didn't spend enough time in prayer. I want you to picture here something with me in the prophetic. When you wake up in the morning, you have two roads that you could take. You have the path of prayer and you have the path of prayerlessness. The path of prayer is a smooth road. It's a road that's going to get you where you're going. It's a road with not too many ups and not too many downs. It's a road of blessings and not curses. But there's another path that when you wake up and you don't pray and you're moving just a little too fast, there's another road that you could take. And it's a road with potholes. It's a road like the Evangelion Thruway. It's all patched up. You understand what I'm saying? You be out there. Look. <laughs> and so when we wake up, we got to decide which road we want to take. And the beauty about God is that there are bridges along the way. Because you might start off on the path of prayerlessness, but you, you just stop. You say, devil, hold on. Devil, hold on. I might not have prayed like I needed to six o'clock this morning or seven o'clock or four o'clock for some that wake up earlier. I might got off to a rough start, but it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And and I might have started off on prayerlessness. But I'm going to cross over this bridge and get back on this smooth road. You see, and that's what prayer can do for you. You know, that's what prayer can do for you. He said, pray that you enter not into temptation it'll keep trouble away from you you see but saints of god that word temptation not only hallelujah means hallelujah trouble and trials but there's another meaning from it that word temptation hallelujah also means uh elicit uh, uh hallelujah uh, solicitations to sin offers to sin allurements to sin is the traditional meaning of the word temptation is also rooted in that Greek word as well. What I'm saying is, is that temptation is when the devil, the world, the flesh tries to get you to do things you know you shouldn't be doing. You understand what I'm trying to say? Temptation is not only trouble, it's also offers of sin. And when Jesus says, pray, oh God, that you enter not into temptation. Jesus is telling you. That prayer will not only ward off trouble, it will ward off the devil trying to tempt you with certain things. Amen. There's a man of God here, hallelujah, you being tempted every which way, amen, to not be right with your wife, to not be faithful with your family. And you fighting the best way you can. And you're saying, Lord, these people don't dress right on the job. Job, They doing this and they doing that. And you feel like you're about to drown. You swimming. You trying to do right. You trying to do right. But the temptations are all around you. You're surrounded. And I got a word for you this morning, man of God. Woman of God. Whatever you're going through, and I use the women as, as just an example. It might be the drink. It might be the drug. It might be the old friends. It might be the, the hustling. But whatever it is, it's all around you. And you don't know which way to turn because wherever you go, evil is always present. God got a word for you this morning. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Listen, when you, they all around you, you thinking, this, this is what you're doing. You're fighting them cornerly. You're using your own strength. But God is telling you this morning, yeah, they all around you. Yeah, hallelujah. You, you feel like you're struggling. They're on your back. God is saying, listen, just put up your hands and fall on your knees. You see what I'm saying here? And when you fall on your knees, an explosion going to happen in the spirit. Your enemy is going to be scattered. They're going to flee. They came in one way. They're going to flee out seven different ways, the Lord said. You see? they all around you. On your back. They're trying to hem you up. You see? And listen, I want to tell you, we are in an age of temptation. Did you know that? We're in an age of temptation. 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 We pray that you are blessed, encouraged, and challenged by today's message. As always, we would love for you to fellowship with us in person. Our service times are Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Also on Tuesday's midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check us out on the web 24 hours a day at philadelphiacc.org. Until next time.
God bless.